I'm going to explain how you can use something called a target tag to animate cameras and lights plus set up a three-point lighting system. To follow along, go to File, Open, and go to Working Files, Cinema 4D Files, and open up Target Tags. I set up this animation using this balloon that comes inside the Content Browser. Let me just kind of pull through it quickly here so you can see how that works. You see the light kind of goes on it and then goes off it sometimes. The light is animated as well. What I want to do is have that light and two other lights point at the balloon. So let me show you how I set this up. I'm going to go to the top view by pressing F2. And here's the balloon, and then here are three lights. This one, this one, and this one. This is a typical three-point light setup. Now, there are about as many different three-point light setups as there are people who set them up, so this is just one example. But if you own the retail version of Cinema 4D, you would find a three-point light setup very much like this inside the Content Browser, but it's not available in the light version. So let me show you how this works. I've got a key light, this one here. The key light is the main light, and it's a spotlight. I'm going to click on General. See, it's a spotlight, 100% intensity, and it throws shadows. The effects light is this one down here. I use it just to add a little bit of color, a little bit of a highlighting. So I made it orange to make it warmer. It too is 100%, and it's a spot, but it's not throwing a shadow. I don't want to have too many shadows here. One advantage of a virtual studio is that you can have lights that don't throw shadows. Go to the fill light here. This is this one over here. The fill light is an area light in the shape of a rectangle. So I'm just filling in this side of the balloon with a lower intensity light just to kind of give it some depth. One thing about the fill light and the effects light is that they don't illuminate the floor or the ground. If I click on fill light and go down to project, under mode here, I've got exclude. I'm excluding the floor from that light. It's not illuminating the floor. It's illuminating only the balloon. And you can do this with lights. The same thing with the effects light. It's illuminating only the balloon and not the ground plane. So I have an ambient light illuminating the floor. That's this ambient light here. And the ambient light, I exclude the hot air balloon. It's very easy to exclude something. You just drag it down here to this window. You can also include things as well, but we're working with exclude here like that. And the ambient light is just set to a low level light just to kind of give the ground plane some lighting. It's down to 49% here. So the one thing about the three point lighting system here is that all three lights are pointing at the balloon, but then the balloon moves. And so the three point lights don't work very well anymore. So I'd like the lights to continue to point at the balloon as it moves. And you do that by using a target tag. So I'm gonna apply a target tag to all three lights. Click on the first one here on the top and shift click on fill light like that. Now I right click and go to Cinema 4D Tags and go on down to Target like that. And there are the target tags. When you add a target tag to something, it adds a target tab to its attributes. So I click on the key light there. There's a target tab now. Under the target tab, there's a target object. So when you put something here inside the target object area, you're telling the light what to point at. So I want it to point at the hot air balloon. So I just take the hot air balloon here and drag it down to the little opening there. And now it'll point at the hot air balloon. I want the effects light and the fill light to do that too, so I click on this one and shift click on the second one, go to its target tab, and drag the hot air balloon to that as well, and it'll add that to both of those guys. So now we have all three lights pointing at that target, pointing at the hot air balloon. As I animate this, you'll see that they kind of now turn toward it. Look at that. All the lights are turning toward the hot air balloon as it goes by like that, which is pretty slick. Let's take a look at the perspective view here like so. I'll just pull this thing through there like that. They're always pointing right at the balloon, always illuminating it. Now one little thing here, notice the shade here. That's because the light is pointing down here at the basket. That's because the axis of the hot air balloon is way down here. So the lights are pointing down at the basket as opposed to the balloon itself. I'd rather they pointed at the balloon. So I'm going to take this guy back to the beginning here. So I want to use a null object as the target, and I want to put that null object inside the balloon. So I go over here and click on parametrics, and then click on null object to add that to our scene. And now I'm going to take the null and put it into the hot air balloon, making it a child of the hot air balloon like that. If I click on null now and look at its coordinates, it's going to have some very big numbers there. The null is here, but its coordinates are based upon where the balloon is. So it's this far from the balloon, basically. I want to put it into the balloon by making these guys all zero. So it's relative to the balloon, it'll be zero. So I right click on each one one at a time. Now that null object is over here in the balloon, at the bottom of the balloon, not where I want it. I want to pull it up into the balloon. So I take the y-axis and pull it up like that. So now it's up where the balloon is. And now I want the lights to point at it. So I'm going to double click on the name here and say lights. So I'm going to use this to replace the targets in these lights. So I click on the first one, shift click on the last one, go to the target tab like that. I'm going to drag the lights null object down here and replace that. So now the lights will point at the middle of the balloon rather than at the basket. We'll see that little animation going on here. It won't be obviously different, but it's subtly different. It's a little bit different now that it's pointing more toward the balloon itself. All right, now I'd like to add a camera and have the camera follow the motion as well. So I click on this little camera icon up there, add a camera. 
I'm going to name this one Tight Shot. So double click on it, Tight Shot, like so. I want that to follow the motion of the balloon. So I'm going to change to that camera's view by clicking on this little black target there. Now let's move the camera over to the balloon, like that. And I want to follow the motion of the balloon. So I can add a target to the Tight Shot. I can use the existing targets for that. So I'm going to take this target here and control or command click and drag to the camera. And that adds that target to the camera. And now the camera's kind of pointing up because there's a null object right there, that little orange dot there. So it's not really a great composition to point up there. It'd be kind of nice to have this thing off to the side a little bit, maybe higher into the scene. So I'm going to add another null object here. Click on you, another null object like that. Drag it down into the hot air balloon like so. I'm going to name this one camera. I want to change its position, so I'll go down to its coordinates, zero them out like that to put this thing into the balloon. So now I want to connect the camera to this one instead of to the lights. So I click on the tight shot of the camera, go to its target. Let's replace the target object with this new one called camera like that, which will then put the camera down to the basket. And now I'll click on the null object named camera and start dragging that up and see how our actual camera reacts to that. Notice how the camera moves now relative to the null object. Now I want to take the balloon and maybe position it a little bit off to the side so it's not just dead center like that. So I want to move the X and Z axis. That's the red and the blue axis. So I hover on the green here and move it off to one side like that. We're sort of changing the composition of the camera there like that. All right, let's see how the camera handles this now. I'm going to start moving this forward like that. And it's going to go by, obviously. And it's going to try to follow it going down like that. Now we can animate the camera and have it follow along as well. So I can go to the top view, let's say F2. There's our camera there. I can make the camera active and keyframe its position here like that by recording the active object, just clicking this little button there. Go to the end here. I want to move it down like so, like this, and watch it spin around as it goes by a hot air balloon. Kind of position it like that, and then keyframe that. Let's see how that looks back in the perspective view. Go back to the beginning like so, and we'll follow along like that. It's following the motion of the balloon all the way down to its ending point like that. And if I wanted to, let's say, add a second camera for a wide shot, I could position the camera way out in the sky someplace, pointing it down toward the balloon, and then using the same camera target for it as well, and it would just kind of pan across the sky as the balloon moves through the scene. So that's how I use the target tag to animate cameras, lights, and to set up a three-point lighting system.